today on Nurture Store we're talking about how to start homeschooling, how to set off on the right track from the beginning and also how to course correct any time you need a reset and to get back on track. This video is for you if you're brand new to homeschooling and if you've been homeschooling for some time. Your children might just have come out of school or they maybe have never been to school. Whatever your circumstances, by the end of this video, you'll have four key things to think about to help you with a clear plan to move forward. We can be homeschooling for lots of different reasons. What kind of homeschooler are you? Some of us choose to homeschool because we were homeschooled ourselves and also because we believe home education is the best way to educate our children. Some of us homeschool because of our family situation and practical reasons, where we live, where we work or our family circumstances. Some of us homeschool because our children face challenges or difficulties in school. We might think of homeschool as wholly positive or the best choice given the alternatives or even something we'd rather not be doing at all, all other things being equal. You might be watching this because your circumstances have changed and what you were doing before no longer works. Maybe your children are older, their interests or their path has changed, or maybe you have new children or a new job or a new home to factor in. Whatever your reasons, you're welcome here. So do subscribe, join our community. If you're new here, I'm Cathy, the founder of Nurture Store. You can think of Nurture Store as your fairy godmother, bringing you ready-made lesson plans and great activity ideas to help you on your homeschool journey. Nurture Store is all about learning through play and hands-on activities with the aim of raising happy, confident and skilled children. My husband and I have two children who we home educated for about 10 years. They've both graduated now um, from homeschool and they're at college and at university. So I hope to share with you some of the lessons we've learned from our experience, paying it forward if you like. I know starting home education can feel overwhelming. I think it's the best decision we ever made for our children, but nevertheless, it's still a lot of work and responsibility. It can feel fantastic, freeing and the best choice. It can also feel daunting. You might be feeling under pressure to get things right and that your children's future depends on you. So let's talk today about four key things you can do straight away to get clear in your mind what's important to your family and a great plan on how to proceed. The very first thing you'll want to do is check your legal situation. This can depend on where you live and which state as well as which country you live in and it might be affected in some cases by your child's circumstances. Here are some things to consider. Is it legal to home educate in your country? You want to check on your government's website to confirm the answer. In the UK, for example, home education is allowed under the Education Act 1996, which says parents and guardians including those who choose to home educate their children, are responsible for ensuring that the education provided is efficient, full-time and suitable to the child's age, ability, aptitude and any special education needs they may have. You'll also want to check out whether you need to notify any authority that you're homeschooling. In the UK, this depends on whether your child has previously been in school or not. If they have, and rules are different for special schools, you'll need to officially deregister, sending written notification using specific language. Think about whether you need permission from the school your children have been attending. Again, using the UK as an example, the Child Law Advice Organisation explains, it is possible to teach a child at home on a full or part-time basis at any time, as long as the child is not subject to a school attendance order, parents do not need the consent of the school or local authority. And the UK government website says, if your child has special education needs and attends a special school, you'll need to get the council's permission to educate them at home. You do not need the council's permission if your child attends a mainstream school, even if they have an education, health and care plan, an EHC. Other things you'll want to confirm for your circumstances might include 
Do you need to register your child with your council or state? Do you need to teach a specific curriculum? Do you need to teach a certain number of hours or days a year? Do you need to keep written records of what you're teaching? And does your child need to sit any standard tests at any point during the year? The answer to all of these could be yes or no, depending on which country and which state you live in. So to start off on the right foot, you'll want to do your own checks. Other local homeschooling families might be able to point you in the right direction, but be sure to get the official government and state information so you're certain of your legal position. This will ensure your home education is within the law. It can help you shape your curriculum because you'll know what and when you need to teach certain things. And it will also give you confidence, especially if you're beginning homeschooling for the first time, because you'll be able to know that you're following the rules. You might come across people who question your homeschooling in your wider family or your neighbourhood, or perhaps even officials you meet, maybe medical professionals or librarians or other people you encounter. By knowing the law that applies to you, you can be knowledgeable about your rights and responsibilities and you can be confident when you're following them correctly. The second thing to do when starting homeschooling is to focus on your child. The universe or mother nature or God has given you this child. They're unique. Even within your family, if they've got siblings, you know how each child's different. You've chosen homeschooling and you're watching this video because you want what's best for your children. No one knows them better than you. And no one's more invested than you in them becoming successful. So don't compare with your neighbours or other families in your homeschool community because their circumstances and their children aren't an exact match to yours. Don't compare their child's needs with your child's needs or your day one with their year five. Focus in on your child and what they need right now to be their best and learn their best. So that means thinking about their academic strengths and weaknesses. Maybe your child excels at math and so they need a curriculum that is above their age grade to keep challenging them and developing them. But maybe they're weak at spelling and would benefit from actually going back to basics in this area. Maybe they thrive on book learning or maybe they thrive being out and about and learning in the world. Do they like to show what they're learning by writing a report or do they like talking about it? Or would they prefer to show their learning by making a model or drawing a picture? One of the best things about homeschooling is that you can adapt your curriculum, what you do and how you teach, to your individual child. So your home education teaches the way they learn best and goes at their pace, whether that's faster or slower than what they might be doing elsewhere. And curriculum just means what you're teaching and what resources you're using. It doesn't necessarily mean using a specific programme or a set of textbooks or in fact using any textbooks at all. So follow the legal rules that apply to where you live, but then be child-centred. Think about what best suits your unique individual child and start with that. The third thing I'd suggest to you is to think long term. To give your homeschool plan direction and balance, think about your child when they're 40, way into the future, perhaps even older than you are now. Imagine for a moment how you want your child to be at age 40. Not what specific job you want them to have, but what skills and characteristics and feelings you wish for them. Although I talk about Nurture Store being your teaching fairy godmother, we don't actually have a magic crystal ball to predict the future. And of course, things will change as the world develops, but we can all still make a list of the kinds of things our 40 year old children will need to have and to be, to be successful amid all the changes and challenges and opportunities they're going to face. 
I think we'd all agree we want our children to have a feeling of well-being, to have the math and communication and the practical skills to run a household. And importantly, given their needs and the needs of the job market are going to change beyond what we know now, we'll want them to know how to learn so they can adapt and gain new skills at any point in their life when they need them. So let your homeschool open doors for them so they can take any opportunity that comes into being as they get older. And having this long-term vision can help you not sweat the small stuff too much and helps to give us perspective. Is it going to matter when they're 40, how soon they hit certain targets? Do you even know how old you were when you learnt to write your name? Or how old you were when you knew your seven times table? And how old were you when you knew how to spell the word definitely? That's one of the most misspelled words in the English language. And maybe you still don't always get it right. And you're still alive and doing okay. What I mean here is taking a minute to think of them when they're 40 and keeping that long-term perspective in mind can guide our way with wisdom. It won't matter when they're 40 if they learnt their seven times table at age seven or nine or 12. It will make all the difference to them if your home education has helped them feel well-being and confident that they know how to learn things. And now let's get more practical and specific with the fourth thing by thinking short term. We've checked the legals, We've placed our child at the centre of our plans and we've envisioned them when they're 40. Now we simply need to make a start. Here's the thing. There's no such thing as perfect and it's not make or break on the first day or even the first week or even the first year. So let's just make a start. You don't need to have the whole education programme mapped out on day one. Things change. Children change, circumstances change, and we'll adapt to them all as time goes along. For now, we just need to start. So for this week, or this month, or this season, choose a topic to explore, or pick one or two topics that you want to begin with. Something your child will enjoy and be successful with, and you can add more or swap to different things as you go on. I've got lots of resources you can use on the Nurture Store website, so let me be your fairy godmother and save you so much planning time. We've got ready-made lessons and thematic units in our Play Academy that let children learn through play and arts and hands-on activities. They're fun, they're great for creative kids and they're great for families with mixed age children because everyone can join in and do them together. We've got a really wide range of topics for you to choose from, so if this sounds like something your children will enjoy, come and join us. You'll find a link to more details in the video's description, and if you're looking for something specific, let me know in the comments and I'll share what we've got to help you. I know it can feel overwhelming when you're just starting out, but you can do this and you can do this really well. Check out your legals, focus in on your child, Picture them at 40 and work back from there to the really short term. Check out the links on the Nurture Store website and make use of my ready-made lesson plans to get you started. Set your intentions, make a plan and you've already started. Have a great week with your kids.